this is a second generation iPod mini from the year 2005. It is, um, has a sticker on it. That's because I got in a lot of iPods that were not the iPods I was supposed to receive. In those iPods that were not the iPods I was supposed to get, a lot of them had false labels. This one says no power. It is incorrect. And why does it have a screen protector from a bootleg iPod Nano 6th generation? This is the real one. This is the fake one. Oh wait, this is the real one. That's obviously the fake one. I put it on there because I thought it would be funny. And what I did was in that video, I put it right there on my Power Mac G5, and it was going to be a funny gag joke to be in my video shot forever. The reason that's not the case is because every time I bump the table, that happens. For a couple weeks, this thing has fallen to the ground several times per day, for many days in a row, and I hope it still works. I finally stopped putting it up there because well, I didn't want it to get any more broken than it might be right now. I think since it's funny, I'll put the screen protector back on this. Just like new, except it isn't. This thing has a bad battery, and that's the only thing wrong with it. At least it was. Yep, there it goes. And I'm glad that it still hopefully works. Is it booting? It's pink, which isn't my choice color. It is what it is. There's the backlight, and it works. These iPod minis came... Oh, I did not mean to do that. It slipped out of my hand. These iPod Minis came in four and six gigabyte models. Let me take these stickers off. And why is it complaining? It's playing songs? Put it on the hold switch now. No power. That's a lie. And for one thing, here, let's just unplug it. Yeah, the battery's like dead. But it'll, it'll probably stay alive for a minute. But if you try to navigate, yep, yeah, it, it complains. But in this video, we're going to be replacing the battery. And hopefully not breaking this iPod in the process. Because I've been known to accidentally damage things before. Yeah, let's get a peel on this. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Revealing the Apple logo for the first time. It's a six gigabyte model, the highest capacity that these ever were. For some reason, it has slightly different lettering than this one does. These are both six gigabyte models, and this one doesn't have quite the same lettering. This must originate from a different country. Anyway, it's interesting, but these, these aren't iPods. These are just iPod cases. It's like a musical instrument except it hurts your ears. And we're not going to be changing the, the case because all these have engravings because engravings make them worthless. This one doesn't have an engraving even though it's a less desirable color in my opinion. Pink. I wouldn't choose pink, but that's what it is, and we're going to be fixing it. Not, not only do I not have extra click wheel, see, on the second generation models, the click wheel lettering is the same color as the outside. And this is my first generation iPod mini that I have already improved. It, it, I did a video about this. I upgraded its battery capacity. Obviously a lot bigger than the OEM battery. But we're going to be doing an actual upgrade this time instead of just a janky gag upgrade and I'm not going to be messing up and breaking something which is what I'm telling myself right now. See some rubbing alcohol? Let's clean this up. It's already looking quite a lot shinier than it was although there's still sticker residue there. It's complaining about low battery. I understand. That's pretty clean. Not perfect. See how this is all bent up? Sliding it through there breaking that adhesive. This is adhesive from the year 2005. The second generation wasn't even sold for a year. In fact, it was released the same year as the device that replaced it. The first generation iPod Nano. Subscribe to my channel. There it goes. I took its hat off and didn't destroy anything. There's a hole there into darkness and another one. But that one's the music hole. All right, now that I've done the top, I apparently next do the bottom. I don't pretend to be any expert. I've never done this before and I saw on the iFixit page that someone said to label it since apparently this go only goes on one way. I'm just trying not to damage it, you know? This plastic guitar pick thingy won't make any damage. This, it will. My fingernail under it. Well, not sure if that was the correct way to do it, but it worked. I didn't damage anything in the process either. That's the click wheel ribbon. Then there's two screws at the top, and as far as I understand, then after that, the guts should just slide straight out of the iPod. I've got the screw there. Do not want to miss that. Otherwise, I would be screwed. I have lost enough little screws to make sure I'm extra careful to the point of craziness to not lose more screws, because it's really annoying when there's a little screw that you need, and it's just somewhere in the carpet. It's never as simple as people make it look in YouTube videos, is it? I can't imagine why this is stuck in Apparently, it. Apparently, if there's any dents, and this one surely has dents, that makes it a lot more difficult to slide out. So it also could be that. I don't know if you can tell in the video, but that is most certainly not perfectly rounded. It's a little bit compressed. I don't know if I can fix this, though. It's dented, so this metal piece is, like, wrapped around a little bit. It's hard to see on video. Maybe you can see it there, right there. This is a thing that I made and I, I have in my drawer. It's just paper towels and tape. This will make it so I don't destroy the, the case any more than it needs to be. Ha! That's what did it. This and this. And patience and not brute forcing anything because I didn't want to break it. 
Yeah, there's your battery, and there's your Hitachi 6 gigabyte micro drive. There you go. That's your bad battery. That's the new battery. I'll try to clean the insides part of the screen as well. And before I go putting the darn thing back together, it's turning on. I hear the little teeny hard drive spinning up, and it's on. Hey, it didn't die. Battery seems to be a bit longer. I had to grab a different battery, even though this one works. See, it has this bulge here. This isn't like an expanded pillow battery. It just has like the components coming out of it right there. On this one, which is the old battery, it doesn't have that. So it sticks out that much more, which is a lot in an iPod like this. I can kind of cram it in there, but not really without damaging anything. I'm not going for a janky installation. I'm going for a actually works installation. That one fits there a lot better. Plug that in. It's turning on. I don't know how well this battery works, but I know that it's a new one. Oh no, it's shut off. Maybe it's discharged. I'll let it sit here and charge for five minutes. All right, if it dies instantly now, it'll die forever. Oh wait, no, it didn't. We shall see. That other battery might've had some charge in it. This one could have been completely discharged. I don't do the two screws at the top so the guts will actually stay in there. It should be at 80% capacity in two hours. I'll be back. Let's see if the battery actually holds a charge. All right, so it's been a couple hours and let's see what it does. It claims the battery is almost full. So that means that it probably won't die. Before we put this thing back together, let's see what kind of music this thing has on it. Quite a bit of music. Not the sort of stuff I'd be listening to. Oh, it's the guy with the game consoles. I know that it's not going to die right away, but I'm not too sure about this battery overall. Love Bugs iPod. Yeah, I got to check for software updates. You know, you never know when Apple will release a new software update for their 2005 iPod. We're restoring it with its six gigabyte hard drive. Welcome to my new iPod. I'm putting music on it. This really does take a long time. And we got it. Now I need to tell it what language I speak. English. There you go. So before I fully seal this thing up and double-sided tape the, its hat and its bottom back on, I'm gonna let it sit and play music for a while. Even though this is a new battery, I'm not quite sure as to the quality and condition. But I wanna go to all this effort and then have to undo that. And then I'd risk breaking the brittle plastic. I mean, keep in mind, this is 19 year old plastic. I want to be gentle of this. So it's been four days and the iPod is pretty much dead, but that's because I had it playing music all night, the night that I installed this battery and it was still playing in the morning. The battery is definitely as it should be. 18 hours of charge is what is expected out of this device when it was new. So I don't know if we're going to quite get that, but hey, at least the battery works. I did notice that in the four days since I've had this thing together, some dust has gotten in between the screen and the case. We wouldn't want to reassemble this thing with dust inside of it. We got to take it apart again for the last time though, hopefully. Yeah, and all that bending I did of the case, definitely made a huge difference in this thing being able to slide out easily. I didn't show just how much I did, but I spent quite a while. It was already dented like this. It was not from falling off of the computer, okay? But it probably didn't help. Glass cloth, spray some on there. Clean the screen. I'll try to get that inside again. This time I won't use my finger. Let's hope this will get it. Notice that it can help putting this thing in there and kind of pushing down the logic board gently. Then it slides in just like that. It made a big difference. There's no visible dust on the inside anymore. There's two screws again. And there's the click wheel ribbon. That works. And I do like that I got some drawers. That way I keep all the stuff for a specific video together. And oh, then my gosh, I'm working on so many videos that you'll definitely want to get subscribed for. I don't know what I do to keep track of them without this. This thing looks identical on both sides. Got one side. Got the other side. I did write Sharpie on this. It says back, so the back is facing this way. Oh wow, one of the little tabs broke. Riddle plastic, no surprise when it's from the year 2005. Double-sided tape might be preferable, but I'm gonna be using super glue. Now there's that. I'm gonna hold it down, that way the super glue can take effect. And also I can just use some rubbing alcohol and erase this Sharpie here. Same with the top here. I'll grab some super glue and spread it out. And I gotta put its hat back on. It's not gonna be perfectly flat. In fact, before it wasn't perfectly flat because whatever dents and dings it had, made it kind of swoop out a little bit. So it's on hold, that's that little lock there, and now it's not. It works, and now it is completely back 
together. So there you go, a 19 year old iPod mini is now fully repaired and restored to the best that it can be. So there you are, the first time I ever replaced a battery in an iPod and it went well. And you may have noticed I haven't uploaded in two weeks, sorry about that, I needed to take some time to get ahead of my videos. From here on, I'll be continuing with my once a week upload schedule every single Saturday at eight in the morning. And again, thank you members for supporting me. Every single week I do an extra video for the members along with the one I upload for everyone. And this week it's gonna be about my January goals progress. With that, hopefully the members will help me reach my goals and grow my channel. I'll see you guys next week for another video. It's iPod related, by the way, so get subscribed.